Hi, uh, my name is Louisa Gosling and I work for WaterAid. I'm going to talk about uh, the situation of people with disabilities, older people and children in accessing to water sanitation and hygiene. Um, I'm going to talk so, first of all about disability briefly. So disability, the concept of disability is understood by the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities as the interaction between a person's impairment and barriers in the society that affects their functioning. So a disability is the term disability, the concept of disability is a function of this interaction between a person's impairment and barriers and that's a really important concept to, to sort of start off with. Um, as people, obviously people can get impairments, they, some people are born with impairments, some people acquire them through illness in childhood like polio or uh, through accidents or through having a stroke but also people often develop impairments as they age, as they get older, their mobility, their joints may get stiff, their hearing, their sight and so on can, can be affected by ageing. So when we talk about disability we're really talking about all of those, those different sort of aspects. And therefore there are many people who experience disabilities and we're talking about the general figure is a billion, at least a billion worldwide and as the population is ageing that's growing. So it's a big, quest, it's a big issue. Our children are a different issue but they also have issues around their size and their strength and their understanding and their memory. So thinking about how to communicate them, adapting the, the approach is also important dealing with children. And wash facilities are generally designed, and wash services are often designed with this idea of a very sort of a person without any particular additional needs. And when I say wash, we mean water, so talking about access to drinking water, but also water for washing and personal hygiene. Uh, we're talking about toilets, and we're also talking about hygiene, so that's communication and it's about behaviour change and it's about um, understanding where people are at to see how their behaviour may change. So people with disabilities and older people and children have the same needs as everybody plus they may have some extra needs depending on their impairment. So for example some people experience incontinence as they get older or as a result of an impairment or an illness. They may, people who are sitting in a wheel, wheelchair may have specific issues around sores or bed sores for people lying in bed or leprosy may mean that people have additional needs for washing and for keeping clean. When we're talking about this we also need to think about the role of carers. So carers have to, if people cannot access wash facilities on their own, they'll need someone to help them. So that affects their own dignity, having being accompanied, but also it affects the time and the relationship with the person who's caring for them. So that's a big thing to think about. Um, and we also need to think about communication uh, for hygiene messages, for um, consultation and prepare, you know, to be involved in plans, in designing services, that whole issue of communication about whether people are able to come to, to meet, whether they can hear if it's a bit verbal messages or if they can see, if there are pictures and so on, but also impa intellectual impairments, how people are able to understand what it is, the messages that are being um, given. So how does this affect the daily lives? If people can't use facilities independently, then it's obviously it's a big problem for them to actually go to the toilet. If they're not able to use them properly, then they might uh, have to, for example, put their hands on the floor, or if they're visually impaired, they might have to feel their way to get in. And if, if a toilet is dirty, or it could be add additional risk and so on. So it affects their safety, it affects their dignity, and also, as a result, often people avoid going to the toilet at all. So they avoid food and drink during the day so that they won't have to go to the toilet, or they have to wait until somebody's there to help them. And then the result of not doing that, of course, is they can become dirty and smelly. And when they're experiencing social exclusion because of their condition, this can be exacerbated by poor hygiene. The barriers that they face are physical barriers, so things like the design of facilities, the steps, the location, how far it is, um, the, what, how big it is inside, how easy it is to use, whether there are handrails, whether there are visual cues, uh, how the door handles work and so on. So there are physical barriers that can make it difficult for people to access services. There are also social barriers. So very often other people in society just don't think about their needs. They don't listen, they don't take them seriously. 
um, and then they institutional and, and also they or they think they haven't got anything of value to say and they may feel afraid to speak up in public as well if it's not if that's not culturally acceptable and then um, there are also institutional barriers which mean by which I mean the lack of knowledge the lack, lack of plans the, the lack of good examples the lack of monitoring so those things are also really critical in terms of barriers and finally so some suggestions to reduce the barriers the first thing is find ways of, of, of understanding participation find local disabled persons organizations understand the situation find ways of speaking and involving people who are disabled and older people in the, in the um, your consultations think about how you make messages uh, accessible and um, really take time to think about accessibility